Our last speaker is Adrian Ayun. He is the founder and CEO of Forward, which is a AI-based delivery system, really starting with thinking about how to redesign primary care. Um, he was most recently the head of special projects at Google, uh, reporting to the CEO of Google and Alphabet. And he also launched um, one of the most recent uh, Alphabet companies called Sidewalk Labs um, before he left to join Forward and start Forward. Adrian arrived at Google um, after the acquisition of his company called Wavy. Um, um, and spent his first year at Google helping to create and build um, their AI division. Um, his talk today is moving health forward, and we're very excited to hear about what he's been up to. Um, Adrian. So I'm going to start by, uh, by telling you about Ford. But before I even do that, um, what I want to do is give you a little background about how we even got here. So a few years ago, I, uh, I got that phone call that we all really, really, really dread getting. It was from my 31-year-old brother. And he called, I picked up, and he goes, don't freak out, but I'm having a heart attack. What do I do? So my first thought was, not call me, um, <laughs> followed by me saying, oh, God, I need to get to the airport. I flew out to New York, and I was by his side for a few weeks in the hospital. And it was really, really eye-opening. I learned a bunch of really great things. So the first thing I learned is that I'm utterly useless in a hospital. So if you're having a heart attack, don't call me. Call a doctor. The second thing I learned is that doctors are absolutely fantastic. They're well-educated. They mean well. They work their butts off. They're super, super great. But, and there's a big but, us in the world of technology, we fundamentally fail doctors. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, it kind of seems like when I watch doctors that they're, they're kind of practicing with their hands tied behind their back. So let me give you uh, a little analogy from my past. So my first company a whole bunch of years ago was a data center down in LA, and we had thousands and thousands of servers. And our job, similar to doctors, was to keep those servers healthy. So you guys, you know, at least the geeks in the room, kind of remember how this worked, right? You had a website, and your website would go down. So you'd pick up the phone, you'd call the call center, and you'd say, my website's down. And we'd say, oh, no. So we took one of our sysadmins, and that sysadmin would go and figure out exactly which server was yours. They'd walk over to it. They'd plug in their diagnostics equipment. They'd diagnose it, right? And then they'd fix it or treat it, and they'd go back to their desk except they weren't very good at what they did. So 20 minutes later, you'd call back in, this time maybe using some expletives, and say, it's still down. So we'd run back over to that server, and we'd do the same damn thing until we got it right. right? Well, most recently, I was at Google, and there's no more sysadmins anywhere. Now we call them network engineers. So what's really changed? Well, three things. So the first thing is monitoring. So if you install a server today, the first thing you do is you install an agent on it to send me back all the data of what it's doing in real time. And then you have really good analytics on top of that data to tell you exactly what the data means, but also hopefully predict what's about to happen. And then, of course, most importantly, you have really good tools to not leave your desk and to manage these problems, ideally, before they happen. Right? Google doesn't go down anymore, now do they? So really what we've done is we've enabled these network engineers to sit behind their desk and manage millions of servers in real time and just keep them healthy. Well, doctors are kind of stuck in that old world of being a sysadmin, right? So I get sick, and I walk in. And the doctor walks up to me, and they start you know, poking and prodding, and they diagnose me. And they say, here's your treatment. Maybe hand me some meds and send me on their way. But like the sysadmin, they're not very good at what they do. And so two days later, I march right back into the doctor's office, and I say, I'm still sick. And we kind of rinse and repeat until we get this right. Well, I asked myself, the same way that we went from sysadmins to network engineers, could we go from doctors to what I want to call medical engineers? Can we get to a world where they, too, are just monitoring all of our health in real time? And I said, well, I think we can do it using those same three things, right? So monitoring. We keep talking about sensors. So can we equip our, our members with sensors that allow us to understand what's going on with them in real time all day long? 
and then really good analytics to help us understand what does this data even mean, and more interestingly, hopefully predict what's about to happen to them. And then, of course, tools, so that we can uh, interject before these problems happen or so that we can repair whatever issues are occurring really efficiently, but all while just sitting behind our desk, watching over all this information and managing maybe not just the individual, but the whole population. Now, I think most people would agree this sounds really awesome, but it also sounds like a lot of work. So then we said, well, how do we even start to get there? And so what we decided to do was we decided to start by building our own doctor's office. But not a doctor's office that's more of a repair shop for humans, but a little more a doctor's office that's based in this principle of continual health. So let me walk you through what that looks like. So the first step is when you walk into our doctor's office, maybe you notice that it's a little better designed than your typical one. Now, why is this important? It's really, really crucial that people want their health care, that they want to engage it. Because otherwise, you may have the best technology in the world behind the scenes, but users won't even bother using it, right? And we see this all the time. So our design is focused on empowering our members to take control of their health, or as we say, to design their health. So you start by walking up to one of these uh, little check-in iPads on the left, and as you're walking up to it, it detects your phone in your pocket, and it pulls up your account, and it shows you what we call your playlist of the day. It shows you what you're going to get through today. Now, oftentimes, the first step of that is to walk up to the body scanner right next to it, and as you step onto it, the idea is that we collect a lot of information to start to build that view of what's going on with you. So, in just about 45 seconds or so, we, start, uh, we take a lot of information. We start by taking and building a 3D infrared model of you, and that's what you see starting to come together. Then we overlay it with a thermal map on top. Then we do what's known as red light spectroscopy to detect things like your heart rate, your pulse height. And then, of course, we do the super standard, your pulse oximetry, your height, your weight, your temperature, et cetera. But what's great about this is this is entirely non-invasive and non-radiative. So you can do it 100 times a day. You can be pregnant. It's never going to hurt you. But in just that 45 seconds or so, we get all that information, and it's channeled straight into the exam room for you and your doctor to go over. It's also sent down to your phone, so you have access to that information. You're in control. And then we augment that with a few other pieces of information. So we then do uh, a urine test and a blood test. But rather than farming those off to some lab somewhere, waiting three days for them to come back, which means we're fundamentally flying blind during the appointment, we actually process them uh, in the back of house right there on site in our own blood and urine lab. We also augment that with a genomics test um, similar to the one Himant was talking about to help us understand uh, your risk of certain types of cancers. Now, all this information is plumbed into one central system. And when you go into the exam room, you and your doctor are actually augmented by a big touch screen on the wall. And this touch screen starts by just helping collect more data. So maybe the doctor is using sensors in the exam room, right? Stethoscopes, EKGs, otoscopes. All those are live connected up to this screen, which does two things. One, it allows the technology to understand more about what's going on with you. And two, it allows you to actually visualize and understand what's going on with you, not just the doctor. More interestingly, as you speak, the system is actually taking notes and auto-charting for the doctor in real time. So once all this information has been collected into there, in essence, the screen starts to supercharge the doctor. So here you can see an example where on the right, the screen is actually contextually loading all the relevant information that the doctor might want to know about this person's blood pressure. You can see even the notes that the, the screen has taken about what the person has said. But most interestingly, the screen actually starts to suggest plans that are appropriate for the individual based upon their information. Now, it's not enough to just diagnose things, and it's not enough to just produce plans. You have to help people get there, and you also have to help continually iterate based off of what we see. So we send you home with sensors to continue to monitor your progress. Now, sometimes those sensors are wellness-related, sleep sensors, exercise, diet sensors, et cetera. But sometimes they're far more medically related. These could be things like EKGs, uh, blood pressure, cataract sensors, glucometers, et cetera. Um, all of these sensors, when you use them, are live connected back up to our system. Now, oftentimes when you go to the doctor, you also need 
things like medicines or treatments. And one of the problems there is the doctor will often say, go across the street, go to Walgreens, get it, and you'll be fine. The problem is, again, users just won't do that. They'll just go home instead. And so what we do is we're, we try to be a one-stop shop for people. So we send, you home from, uh, we send you home with meds from our pharmacy or whatever, whether it's a sensor, et cetera, that you might need. We try to just keep it all in-house. Now, it's the year 2017, so it turns out that when you leave, the most important thing is the app in your pocket, right? And so this app serves two purposes. The first purpose is that it's now your medical home. All your medical information lives right there in your pocket, again, empowering you to understand what's going on with your health and engage it. But more interestingly, that app is the lifeline to forward. So we have a 24-7 team of nurses and algorithms that are just sitting there watching over all this information coming in. And we will proactively reach out if we're not seeing progress towards the goal. And that reach out could be from your doctor saying, let's tweak your plan. But it also could be from a health coach, a nutritionist, a dietitian, just helping you along your way. Again, trying to be by your side and kind of encourage that notion of, of health at all times. It also serves as a way for us to be reactive to any problems that do come up. So no matter what hour of any day, if you are feeling sick, you message us and you'll get a response from a medical professional in under about 90 seconds. Now, what are we really creating in this? We're creating that original notion of that medical engineer. Now, how's that look? Well, it's those same three components. So the first is monitoring. We're collecting data, whether it's from the body scanner or sensors you take home with you. We're collecting all that information to understand what's going on with you continually. And then, of course, we're feeding it into our central algorithms that analyze it and tell us both what's occurring and, ideally, what's going to occur. And, of course, we're trying to uh, equip our providers and supercharge them with these tools so that they can both correct things and intercede before bad things happen. But the interesting part of this cycle is that it's closed loop. So anything that our providers and our members are experiencing, we get to learn from and we get to improve over time and, and actually start to create that medical AI that gets better and better every day to supercharge our doctors. So you can see this operating today. Uh, our first locations uh, just opened a few months ago up in San Francisco in the financial district. I welcome you all to come by and try it. And of of course, uh, we're also working on some other locations that'll spring up in a uh, town near you fairly soon. Thank you very much.